Your Coca-Cola bottler presents Claudia. Claudia, based on the famous play and novels by Rose Franken. Brought to you transcribed Monday through Friday by your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. Relax, and while you're listening, refresh yourself. Have a Coke. And now, Claudia. Say, David. Hmm. You thirsty? Nope, not a bit, thanks. Oh, you're welcome. Well, I think I'll have a glass of milk. But before I have my glass of milk, I think I'd like a kiss. Why don't you have them both at the same time? That'd be clever. Mm. Consider yourself kissed. Now, go get your milk. You know, one little kiss gives me an enormous thirst. Mm. My kisses do that to you, do mm, they? Yes, yes. Now, skadoodle. Well, that wasn't much of a kiss, David. You know, a kiss like that could give a girl quite a complex. No, you don't say. Yes, I do. Mm-hmm. Next thing you know, I'll be going around with a twitch. What's his last name? Oh, <laughs> Oh, dear. I guess I better get that milk. Well, don't sound so pathetic about it. Go it's get it. It's no fun drinking alone. Oh. Well, it's not my fault if you've driven me to solitary drink. You know, they say Cleopatra bathed in milk, and she was the most beautiful of women. Mm. Well, you're beautiful enough with me. And just to prove how beautiful I think you are, I might even have a glass of milk with you. Claudia, what are you standing there for? Shh. What's going on in here? Whisper, Dave. Whisper. What are we whispering for? A mouse. Where's a mouse? I don't see a mouse. Shh. A wee brown mouse right there, see, on the pantry floor. Oh, I don't see any mouse. You're seeing pink elephants. No, no, I know a mouse from a pink elephant when I see one. He's the sweetest it. little brown mouse with the little black eyes, like shoe buttons. Shoe buttons. Right hmm. there in the crack of the pantry closet door, look. Shh. Well, what do you know? A country mouse. Sweet, adorable little mouse. David, what are we going to do? No, we're not going to lay a finger on that poor, helpless little mouse, if that's what you think. Of course, that's not what I'm thinking. I'm thinking of Shakespeare. Shakespeare? Yes. That great, big, brave cat? Well, well don't you worry about Shakespeare. Shakespeare now. will catch him. Well, if Shakespeare don't hasn't snicker. caught him now, well, the chances are that he won't. If I found out you went and squeaked on the mouse and told Shakespeare where he was, I will never forgive you. Now, listen. I am much fonder, much fonder of this mouse than I am of that cat of yours. Hmm. Just because you like mouses is no reason why you should insult cats. Cats. Oh, hey, he's disappeared back into the pantry closet. David, I simply adore mouses. Oh, you do. You just adore mouses. Yes. I'll tell you what I'll do. What? I'll get you one for a watch fob. Do that. Mm, I will. Well, come on. Let's tiptoe out of here. All right, let's tiptoe. Come on. One, two, three, four. (laughs) Come on. Hey, why are we tiptoeing? Well, we don't want to scare the little mouse. Oh, I see. Of course. Do you know that's our first country mouse, David? Mm Mm-hmm. Has hay in his hair. Mm. It's the first one we've seen. I wonder how'd he get in the house, I wonder. Listen, you didn't leave any holes in the floors or the walls when Mm. you rebuilt it, did you? No, not a hole. A mouse can always find his way in, though. Well, how? Down the chimney? Maybe. Oh, the water pipe, probably. Water pipe? Oh, they're so sweet. David, remember the mouse we had in the city? Oh, you mean Goliath? Mm. <laughs> he was some mouse, oh, huh? Oh, he's wonderful. Yeah, that mouse had a pedigree. Yes. <laughs> this one looked awfully tame to me, didn't he, to you? Mm-hmm. Come on, let's go back. He's probably Say hello. From, Good evening. He's probably from a mouse circus, you know. Oh, yes, probably. Uh, we, we can make him feel at home. Yeah, if we go back, we'll scare him. Oh. How do you know it's a him? Oh, mice are hymns. Oh, no, no, I think rats are hymns. Mouses are she's. Oh, no, that's, that, that, that's a nice look, thing to look, say. Listen, there she is. Where? She's so tame. She's staring right at mm-hmm. us. Mm-hmm. David, can you imagine how no- enormous we look to a mouse? Hello there, Mahitabel. Oh, now that's a silly name for a mouse. Mahitabel? That's yes. a fine name. This mouse well, looks exactly like Mahitabel. so much bigger than the mouse is, though. No, no, we can't call her Mahitabel. Won't do it all. What about, um, um... Mm. What about, um... Aloysius. Aloysius will do it. That's a lovely name. Aloysius? Aloysius. 
Stand up. Shake hands. You know, I thought it should be pronounced Aloysius. Well, fine. We'll call him Aloysius. Yeah, pussy, pussy. Come on, Aloysius. Don't say that now. Oops, there he goes back in the closet mm-hmm. again. That's because you said pussy, pussy, pussy. Very shy, isn't he? Maybe he doesn't like his name. Oh, he loves his name, I can tell. David, you better not tell Mama. Oh, you don't think that Mama would stay in the same house with a mouse? Oh, I'm sure she wouldn't. Mm-hmm. Well, then out goes Mama. Back to New York on the next train. She may not darken my doorstep again. <laughs> such a goop. Well, any man would prefer a mouse to his mother-in-law any day, and I'm no different. Well, maybe we can convince Mama to keep the mouse, and then we can keep Mama. Oh, I see. I that would fix it. One big happy family. Oops, there he is again. <laughs> Hello, Aloysius. Oh, he's charming. Alloy, see us? We see you. <laughs> Alice, you're so silly. I think your brain's about as big as that mouse's is, really. He seems to be going back and forth into the closet. Out He's commuting. Hey, here comes the express, big boy. <laughs> Get on it. There it goes again. Into the closet, out of the closet, into the closet. That's boring, isn't it? <laughs> I think he loves it. I can tell. You can. Hello, mousy, mousy, mousy. Hey, I bet, you I, I bet you I can get him to come up and sit on my hand. Oh, I bet you can. I bet you I can. Tell you what I'll do. I'll hypnotize him. Here, here, little mouse. David, if you could see yourself. Now, now, now look me in the eye. No, the other eye. Now, now, come on, come on now. Now, don't be afraid. You fool. The poor thing's shaking all over. You're scaring it. Mm, that mouse adores me. Now, you go away. Oh, I wish we had some cheese in the house. I bet it adores cheese more than it adores you. <laughs> Look, I'm the big cheese in this house. Don't you forget it. Now, stop giving that mouse ideas. Come over here, you monster. Where are you? no way to talk to a mouse. You have to be gentle ah, and sweet. My, like m- I am to you. Mice, mice <laughs> like to be treated rough. <laughs> oh, he's so sweet. He's crawling up. David, he's coming toward you. I always knew I had a fatal attraction for mice. Oh, that's why I love you, darling. Mm-hmm. No, that's not why, is it? You need to shave. You can't creep. <laughs> I don't know why people have a prejudice against poor little things like that. Because they're smaller than we are. A great deal brighter. Yes, I guess that's why. Mm-hmm. Come on, pussy, pussy, pussy. Oh, Mr. Just... Norton, Mrs. Norton. Oh, oh hello, Bertha. Mm-hmm. Bertha, look what you have done. I have done? What? Yes. I see you both kneeling on the floor. Is something wrong? You have just done something terrible, Bertha. Scoot it back into the closet again. What scooted back into the closet? Well, the new household pet, of course. You do not make any more sense than two children. What household pet scooted back into the closet? Shakespeare is in the bedroom with Fritz. The sweetest, tiniest, shakiest little brown darling you ever saw, Bertha. All right, so you cannot tell me. I'll go into the closet and see myself. Over my dead body. Uh, maybe we ought to tell her, Claudia. After all, she um, she does have to live with it. Yes, you know? I guess you're right, David. Mm. You're right, you're right. Bertha, it's a mouse. A mouse? A mouse. In my kitchen? A mouse in your kitchen. Mm, we just discovered him, Bertha. His name is Mahitabel Aloysius Naughton. <laughs> Do you like that name, Bertha? No. You don't? No. Well, he does. We want you <laughs> to treat him with utmost respect. No. A mouse in mm. my pantry. Mm-hmm. Oh, no. How did it happen? Oh, the mouse knew a good thing when he saw it. He certainly did. I'll scrub that closet tomorrow. And good. Mrs. Norton, I'm so sorry, but the mouse... I don't know how it got in. He'll be very glad you clean up the place for him, Bertha. He likes it. He's so excited about it, Bertha. I I get Fritz to put a trap in the pantry tomorrow. And we go over the whole house from tip to toe. Now, look here, Bertha. This is no criticism of your housekeeping. On the contrary. You understand it is difficult sometimes to keep the mice out of the houses in the winter. Bertha, you stop worrying. We appreciate your hospitality. And the mouse you chose is adorable. It certainly is. No, I'm no hostess to mice. No, congratulations. You certainly are. One trip and it will be gone. Are you serious? Naturally, I'm serious. David, talk to her. I certainly will. Bertha. I have been delegated to talk to you. Here, here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Bertha, it just so happens that my wife and I are extremely fond of wildlife. You're doing beautifully. Mm -hmm. Go right on. We are very fond of animals. I like pets too, Mr. Norton, but mice is not a pet. Oh, there I beg to differ with you, Bertha. Yeah, Mr. Norton, but a mouse... A mouse is one of the lowest species of life. In a mouse, Bertha, you have a whole symbol of the downtrodden human race. Condensed into one small, round body. David, that was beautiful. I've fallen in love with you all over again. And I set the trap first thing in the morning. Oh, no. Now, Bertha, do you mean to tell me that you would set a trap for that poor, innocent little mouse? Yeah. Now, all of this is in vain, Bertha. Yeah. 
Come, I set get the out on your hands. first thing in the morning. No, no, no but Come on, get out on your hands and knees here with us now. Look him in the eye. David, shoe buttons. Where? Bertha, you look at that face coming around the door. Can you look at that and not melt? Yes, I can. I do not melt. Such a face will be sweet on a bird or a dog, but a mouse? No. Bertha, you're heartless. Mm, she certainly is. Mitty Bell, Michael Bell, or whatever your name is, Aloysius, <laughs> the end is in sight. Now say your prayers. He's gone. Oh, come on, let's look at him in his house. I guess he lives in this closet. Right? No, a smart mouse. He picked the good closet. Yes. <laughs> in here are all the crackers and the flour. Yes, smart. Oh, you I feed think him it well. must be all go out tomorrow. Mm. Now you're scaring him. He didn't have his last night in peace. Take it easy, Bertha. I don't Quiet. see anything. Why don't you look under the bottom shelf? Well, Unless there's a hole in the wall, he would have gone through there now. Turn on the light, darling. Uh, oh, you are like babies with a new toy. Uh, it is good to find people who love even mice, but sorry. Tomorrow the trap. No, no, Bertha, Such Bertha. Such prejudice, Bertha. David, I see him. I mean, her. Move over and let me see. He's a her. Scoot, Bertha, scoot. Mm -hmm. there. Look there in the corner next to the flower canister. Tell me if you see it, too. Get down, look. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. What do you see? Well, well, well. Do you? Mama Mouse and her three baby mouses. Look at them huddling up to her. Their eyes aren't even open. They're tiny, like egg yolks. <laughs> look at that. It's, <laughs> a it's a family portrait, huh? David, look what they're sitting on. Your blue sock. Oh, I That's the one I'm... I couldn't find. Remember, I looked I for weeks and I couldn't find it. Hole in She's it anyway. smart. She found it and brought it all away. She dragged it all the way in here to make a bed for her children. That's, that's really a mother for you. I wonder if she Bertha, could find my suspender. <laughs> you know, I, I see Mrs. Norton. Look at the way she's looking at us. Say, you haven't seen a pair of green socks Don't anywhere. Don't disturb them. <laughs> look, they're all shivering so. Now, what do you say now, Bertha? Oh, no, no. Mm -hmm. No, I... I say you cannot disturb a mother and her children. Yes, that's what I say, too. And when the children are a little older, Fritz will find them a place in the barn. And the house mouse will become a barn mouse. Oh, David, aren't they adorable? Mm -hmm. Mr. and Mrs. David Norton announce their house guest, Mrs. Mitchell Aloysius <laughs> Mouse. And her three little mice. <laughs> These broadcasts are adapted for radio by Manya Starr, and the entire production is supervised and directed by William Brown Maloney. A pleasant custom has taken root among workers, whether they earn a living with head or with hand. It's the custom of working refreshed with ice-cold Coca-Cola. You probably have a schedule at home that would make an eight-hour day seem pretty light, and so an occasional pause does wonders to perk you up. Why not go to the refrigerator, get yourself a bottle of Coke, and refresh right now. Every day, Monday through Friday, Claudia comes to you transcribed with the best wishes of your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. So listen again tomorrow at the same time. And now this is Joe King saying au revoir. And remember, whoever you are, whatever you do, wherever you may be, when you think of refreshment, think of Coca-Cola. For Coca-Cola makes any pause the pause that refreshes. And ice-cold Coca-Cola is everywhere. <laughs> <laughs>